On the 4th of June, 1904, Henry Grob was born in Braunau, Switzerland. He was a portrait painter, newspaper columnist, and would one day become Switzerland's first professional chess master. Grob understood that the journey he embarked upon was filled with many challenges, and may not lead to success. A few years before Grob decided to follow this path, two other Swiss masters, Hans Farney and Paul F. Jonher had already embarked on this path, but they moved to Germany early on in their careers, where there were more opportunities for a chess professional to earn a meagre living. Grob was insistent his work would remain in Switzerland, so that he could rightly be called the first Swiss professional player. He also made significant contributions to popularising chess in Switzerland, although the Swiss Chess Association and opponents of professional gaming were opposed to this. There was frequent friction, especially with Erwin Volomey, who was also a Swiss chess master, and edited the chess column in the Basler Nachrichten for 40 years. Yet despite this, in 1933, at the age of 29, Grob decided to make a living as a chess master. Grob's first major success in chess came at the age of 17, during a similar performance against the soon-to-be world chess champion, Alexander Alekhine who he actually defeated during this game. He also took part in several small championship tournaments in the 1920s, but as he was still working as a portrait illustrator and landscape painter during this time, he wasn't able to fully commit to chess. It wasn't until the 1930s that he regularly began to take part in tournaments in Switzerland and abroad. He also played many smaller competitions against national and international greats, although he usually had a difficult time against the latter, playing against the likes of Salomon Flohr, Miguel Nydorf, and Max Yu. Grob was considered a leading Swiss player from the 1930s to the 1950s, and was invited to many prestigious closed tournaments. In 1926, he tied for 10th to 12th in Marin, won by Edgar Cole. Chess fact. In 1924, a chess tournament was held in the same city in which Akiba Rubinstein played Ernst Grunfeld playing a variation of the semi-slab defence. This is now known as the Murano variation due to the success Rubinstein had and the location of the tournament. In 1932, he tied for 9th to 12th in Bjorn, which together with London 1932 was the strongest tournament of the year. It included five of the top ten players in the world at the time, featuring Alekhine, Yu, Bogolzhibov, Flor, and Khan. In 1934, he tied for 13th to 14th in Zurich at the 37th Swiss Championship. At this championship, Alakine won, followed by Yu and Flor. Grob had a score of 4-15 at this event, notably drawing against Yu. In 1935, he took third behind Flor and Koltanowski in Barcelona. He took third again in Roses, in which Flor won and he took 10th in Bad Nauheim. In 1936, he took 10th in Dresden, tied 3rd to 4 in Rue, and placed 2nd behind Erik Lundin in Ostend. In 1937, he won his first tournament on tiebreak, coming tied 1st to 3rd with Ruben Fine and Paul Keres in Ostend. Players which he also won both of his games against during the tournament. This would be an outstanding highlight of Grob's tournament career, as at the time, both players were considered contenders for the World Championship. Had he not been caught off guard by some weaker participants, this would have made his victory even more sensational. Grob also had success at other tournaments, but in 1950, he placed 6th in the International Chess Tournament of Gaijon, which would be the same year that Grob was awarded the title of International Master at its inauguration by the governing body of chess, FIDE. Grob claimed the title of Swiss champion twice in his career, in 1939 and 1951. Later in life, Grob was unfortunately unable to build on his earlier chess success. As a result, he made a name for himself as a chess writer and organiser. He wrote the books The Opening Using the Battle Plan in 1938 and learned to play chess in 1942 which saw multiple editions after his death and are still known to many Swiss chess fans today. One of the greatest contributions Grob had to chess in Switzerland 
was as the founder of the New Zersche Zeitung Correspondence Chess Center, which he founded on July 1st, 1940. His idea was simple and excellent. At this time, World War II was raging, and this gave military men up and down the coast an opportunity to play against a chess champion, and to help fill their leisure time. Civilians were also able to take the opportunity to play against a renowned champion. The principle of the correspondence games was simple. Readers sent their answers to the editorial team by post, and one or two days later, they found Grob's answer in the morning edition of the NZZ paper. Regardless of whether they were a chess champion or amateur, everyone could play a game of correspondence chess against a very strong opponent. The company was so successful that it continued after the war ended in 1945. For the games conducted during the war, there were no charges for any soldiers, officers, or auxiliaries of the Swiss Defence Forces who wanted to play Grob, while private civilians had to pay a fee of four Swiss francs by postal check. After the end of World War II, there was a flat fee of two Swiss francs for anyone who wanted to play Grob. Players also had the choice of whether they wanted to have the white or black pieces. Ingeniously, as I stated earlier, the moves back from Grob were not transmitted by postcard. Instead, each game was given a number, and the morning editions of the NZZ published lists of the latest moves. Grob's opponents only had to read the newspaper to see the hit Grob's latest move. They responded on postcards, citing the game number and the latest move. Initially, postcards were sent to the NZZ's offices, although later games were sent to Grob's home address. It wasn't until 1972, at the age of 68, that Grob resigned from management of the NZZ. Compared to his previous chess ventures in tournaments, his work with correspondence chess would define his career. He played over 3,000 games and thus set a unique record. He won 2,703, lost 430, and drew 481 games. The material from these games were incorporated into the editions of his opening works and five special game collections. Grob achieved success as both a tournament player and as a chess writer and organiser, but in my opinion, his greatest achievement was the theoretical work and games throughout his career that he played with the opening 1, G4. This opening is named after Grob, who analysed the move in detail and played hundreds of correspondence games with the opening. In the NZZ newspaper column, Grob called the opening a spike opening, which is a name that is still used occasionally, although today it is more commonly known as the Grob attack. Grob also wrote a book on the opening called Angriff, or Attack G2 G4. However, Grob himself, after extensive research, came to the conclusion that White's attack plan, 1, g4, 2, bishop g2, and 3, c4, is refuted by black, 1, d5, 2, e5, and 3, c6. Grubb's attack has generally been considered inferior and is not usually used at serious events, although the international grandmaster, Michael Bassman, and the Greek grandmaster, Spirit on Scambrus, occasionally play the move and have had success at tournaments. But more on that later. Grob passed away in 1974 in Zurich, Switzerland. He was Switzerland's first professional chess master, and one of the greatest promoters of the game in word and deed.